Let's take a look at CX1 Supervisor and namely how we do a number of tasks within Supervisor to manage our agents. So here I am logged into Supervisor. I can see I've got my various agents. I've decided to not look at logged out agents for now. I can see I've got a few agents that are in different working states. Um, I've got some alerts as to what's going on with people in various different states. And uh, from this, I could manage the activity. One of the key things you're going to be asked is how do I listen to a call? So let me send a call through and we'll see what that looks like. So now we can see Barry is on an active call and we have a few options available to us. Within this, what I can do is I can click on Barry and I can see the contacts that Barry is working on. We've got a Instagram, we've got a call, we've got some um, chat as well. I can see his activity, various different states he's been in throughout the working day. And I can see the contacts where they've been working and actually go and launch these really easily out of uh, the recording as well. So potentially what we need to do is monitor this. There's a, there's a reason maybe we've seen this call going on for too long, for example. Two different ways to do it. One is via the three dots here, monitor voice, monitor screen. Also via the contacts, this breaks it down into a per contact view because I can also do monitor chat. So let's monitor the voice call first. I'm gonna click monitor voice. And at that point, I can hear the phone call that's going on. I can hear both parties. I can hear what they're saying, all of that kind of good stuff. And then I have some further options. Just gonna mute it down. So I have some further options here. If I click on my monitor where I can provide assistance. So this gives me the option to click that. And then I'm providing a one-way assist to Barry. If I go back to my agents list, we can see Barry is now receiving assistance. If I click back here. I can just go back to monitoring the voice. I can join that call to make it a free party conference. I can take over that call and I can also ad hoc evaluate this as well. One of the other options available to me is to monitor screen. So if we've got screen recording enabled and we have it installed on the agent's client, then we can see uh, their desktop and you can set various different parameters around this when you have recording policies and how many screens. And what we can do here is we can see Barry is potentially a bit distracted. All he's doing is looking at pictures of himself on Google, not paying attention to his customer. Now, I could at this point potentially provide some assistance, say, hey, uh, Barry, can you go back to serving the customer, please? Get off of Google image search. If we do that, we turn that back on. Barry quickly panics and we're back here as we go. We can see that there was some assistance going on there and the alerts that the agent was getting. Um, however, I could also real-time evaluate that as well. So if I go here and I've got a live monitoring review, this was something that was brought in to um, CX1 over the course of 2024. So the ability to live monitor an interaction. So I'm gonna say here, supervisor intervention. Uh, it was an inquiry. The agent was not giving their full attention and I'm gonna say social media. I'm just gonna say yes to a couple of these things. Say no to that. And at that point we can save and send that through if we want to. So that gives us the ability to screen monitor, to live listen, there's continuous monitoring, all that kind of good stuff as well within CX1 Supervisor. Now, if we wanted to make a change to Barry's skills, so I'm just gonna end this now. If we go back to the skills tab, there are two ways of doing this. So how do I change skills and assignments within CX1? Firstly, I could just click on the skill itself and I could see who the assigned active agents are and that should be loading for me. There we go, Chris and Barry. Say I want another user in this though, I can go and click unassigned and add Dan, for example. If I select multiple people, then it will assign those both. If I then go back to my assigned and active, we can take Billy out, for example, accordingly, or we can 
unassign. You probably want to use unassign rather than active and deactivate on that regard. The other way to do it is via agent. So if I go to Barry again, we can look at Barry's skills and we can see he is added to a number of different skills. If I go to unassigned, then I can add another one here. So I'm gonna add breakdown. Doesn't feel like that bad a day, but we'll, we'll go with that anyway. Um, and if we go back to our assigned all, then potentially I wanna take these out and unassign them accordingly. So the other thing we might want to do here is look at agent states. I can see here, for example, that Chris Holt has been on lunch for two hours. So not a problem with that. I like a long lunch, but potentially what we want to do is change our agent state here because actually I am now doing training and we update that. The agent doesn't need to do anything. It will just update that accordingly. Likewise with Barry here, actually we want Barry to next be doing something else but because he's in a working state, we cannot change that agent state at all. So we might send him a note instead. Um, we can also make an agent available. Doesn't mean you should. So here I could make Craig available from a list, but bear in mind the consequences to your customer and your agent experience if you were to do that. And likewise, Gary, he's in the default team. I could make him unavailable just away from his desk at that point. And if it doesn't like it, it will also give an error. So it does depend on your roles and permissions and what you've got available to you there. If you wanted to then listen to calls after the event, you could go up to application launcher here, or you could simply from supervisor, open out the applications view on the left and click on interaction search. And then from here, what we can do is we'll do a search for today. We're going to see Barry has been busy today. We've got various different interactions that have screen recordings and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, if we just hang up the call that I'm on at the moment, that will come through. And we can see here, we've got a 27 minute call. Um, there were some categories that took place. I can double click on this call and it will provide me the interaction. If we're using screen recording as well, which looks like we are, if you have multiple screens, they will show across here and you have the option. When we're listening, we can see certain things. So the patron was appreciative there, contacted multiple times, was spoken about. We can also potentially look to evaluate this by clicking on the three dots, clicking evaluate, then selecting our form. Slightly different form now because it's post. So we haven't got a live interaction. So we're gonna ask slightly different questions. We're actually gonna use some of the analytics in the platform to determine whether the call was positive, whether the agent effectively questioned, which it's decided it has done already. We can do various different things here. We just say yes to a few of these. Give Barry a good score today. It's picked up empathy was used. It's picked up it was a mixed tone. I can override this though. And we didn't pick up any negative sentiments from the agent. So I'm gonna click no. If I click yes, I'm actually using negative scoring at that point. Great work, Barry. So that's how we listen to a call or any interaction. That's the big thing here, actually. So if I go and have a look at this chat, then firstly, I can see every chat conversation that's gone on within that conversation, but I can also play it as an overall interaction and see where potentially there might be some issues here. The customer is saying help quite a lot and I need some help. So that's what's triggering the analytics there. And I can review that accordingly. If I need to see more historical reporting, then I have reporting available to me in dashboards and also from the application launcher. And depending on your role and permission, you will see all kinds of different reports here. I'm just looking at some of the QM and coaching reports by the looks of this view. Lots of things you can do. Finally, if I just finish up with live monitoring, we're gonna go return back to Barry and we're going to look at contacts. We're going to see here that Barry is on an Instagram interaction as well, and we can monitor that chat. We can bring that into our monitor view. You can monitor voice and um, digital at the same time, including multiple um, digital. We can see here that actually there's already been a an interaction where I've provided assistance as the supervisor saying, just check stock levels as it looks like the customer's already not happy with um, strawberry yuzu not being available. 
So there you have it, some how-tos with CX1 Supervisor and some of the other applications around the CX1 portfolio. Thank you very much for joining.